in this video we are going to discuss about integrity constraints uh, first let's see what is a constraint constraint means a condition or rules which are to be applied on which are to be applied on a database or a table database or a table so constraints means a set of conditions or rules which are to be applied on a database or a table so that the table can accept only valid data that is correct data here we can classify constraints into four types the first one is domain integrity constraints domain integrity constraints second one is entity integrity constraints third one is referential integrity constraints last one is key integrity constraints so in this video we are going to discuss about uh, these four types of uh, integrity constraints uh, let us see the first one that is domain integrity constraint what is a domain domain means a set of possible values set of possible values values allowed for an attribute allowed for an attribute so domain is nothing but attribute value uh, if you take a table let we have a table like this let name of the table is student in relation model we can call table as relation also so student is the relation name uh, let uh, here we have a fields like this rule number name mocks let the rule number is 1 name is some ramesh mocks 90 let the rule number is 2 name is mahesh mocks some 80 let rule number is 3 name is some suresh mocks some 70 here domain means attribute values okay 1 ramesh 90 2 mahesh 80 so all these are called as attribute values so this is nothing but domain here attribute value should be atomic attribute value should be atomic so atomic means it cannot be divided further it cannot be divided further cannot be divided further so let we have a name like this sudhakar space achala so we can't divide this name further so it can't be divided further okay so we can't divide this one into two parts like sudhakar achala we can't divide like this so this is called as domain here in order to provide the constraints uh, we use just data types so here we have several data types such as we have integer data type or we can use some number and we have string we can use some varchar next we have date next we have time likewise we have several types several data types are there if you take a's then we have to use what integer value a should be a positive integer value it may okay a's means it is a positive integer value a's should not accept either string or date or time let we have here a's field also a's field also let a's is 10 20 here let we have given abc so this is not acceptable here this is not allowed here why because age means the data type should be integer value whereas if you take name name means a string it should contain a collection of characters here instead of ramesh let us assume that here we have entered some date so 20 space 90 space 2022 it is not acceptable here name should contain a collection of characters if you take date so date means it should contain some day 
month date month as well as year it should not contain any string so timings hours minutes seconds it should not contain some integer values like 100 1000 likewise it should not contain so this is about a domain so domain means that attribute value in order to enforce the constraints we use the data types okay now let us see the second type of constraint so what is the second type of constraint the second type of constraint is entity integrity constraint entity integrity constraint so first let us see what is entity here here what is the first row here 1 ramesh 9010 so entity means uh, anything that has an existence anything that has an existence so this row is an entity this row provides information about ramesh or this row provides information about rule number one the second row is an entity the second row is an entity why because the second row provides information about rule number two this third row is an entity why because it provides information about rule number three so entity means anything that has some existence here uh, we have to select one field as the primary key here we have to select one field as the primary key. So here why we are using the primary key. Primary key here mainly used in order to identify the individual rows in a table. So here by using rule number one we can identify that it provides information about rule number one. So by using two we can say that this row provides information about rule number two. Likewise by using three we can say that it pro this, uh, this row provides information about the details of rule number three. So here let us assume that we have selected rule number as the rule number as the primary key. So this primary key is mainly useful in order to identify individual row. Here this primary key cannot be null cannot be null why because if primary key is null then it is not possible to identify individual row in a table let us assume that here we have null value here we have null value so we can't say which row de these details are belonging to which row number here we can't say these row details are belonging to which row number so that's why we can say that primary key cannot be null so it is mainly useful entity integrity constraints are mainly useful in order to provide uniqueness among the rows in a table or relation so for that purpose we have to maintain the primary key here we are maintaining rule number as the primary key so rule number is primary key so here this field that primary key value should not be null why because if it is null then it is not possible to identify that row we can provide other fields value as null there is no problem in place of Mahesh we can write null and in place of the 70 we can write null there is no problem there is no problem we can't if, if you don't provide the details then there is no problem okay but this primary key value cannot be null okay so this is about entity integrity constraint entity means row details row whereas domain means that column value that attribute value okay now let us see the third one the third one is referential integrity constraints so what is the third one referential integrity constraints referential integrity constraints are mainly useful in order to establish the relationship between the two tables here let me have two tables so let it is some child table let the child table is employee table employee table next to parent table is some department table department table employee table contains fields like this employee number employee name salary and department number department number let employee number is one employee name some a a a a salary some 10,000 rupees let the department number is 10 employee number is 2 let the employee name is BBB let the salary is 2000 department number is 20 employee number is 3 
employee name is CCC, salary some 3000, department number is 30. Here we have department table, let it has two fields, department number and location. Let here the department number is 10, let here we have department number 30. Location, location some uh, Hyderabad, location some Mumbai, some Mumbai, okay. So this is nothing but employee table, this is nothing but department table. Here in order to establish the relationship between two tables, we use as primary key, we use as foreign key. So foreign key is mainly useful in order to establish the relationship between the two tables. Let here in employee table, in child table, this department number is foreign key, whereas in department table, this department number is primary key. So here foreign key of employee table is referring to the primary key of the department table. Here, here the point is if foreign key or if foreign key in employee table is referring to the primary key in department table, then every value of the foreign key must present in primary key. Every value of the foreign key must present in primary key. If, if, if we see the first value 10, so 10 is available here. So by using this 10, we can get the details of department number 10. Okay. But if we consider 20, 20 is not available here. This department number 20 is not available here. So this is not allowed. Why? Because here this foreign key is referring to the primary key. So by using the primary key, we can obtain the details of the department number. But here 20 department number is not available in this table. So getting the details is not possible. So this is not allowed. Whereas if we consider 30, 30 is also available here. So there is no problem. So this is about uh, referential integrity constraint. We will discuss more about primary key and foreign key in upcoming videos. Uh, according to this concept, this much of knowledge is enough. Okay. If foreign key of if foreign key in employee table is referring to the primary key in department table, then each value of the foreign key must present in primary key. Otherwise, it is not allowed. Here the department number, this value is not available here. So this is not allowed here. So this is called as a differential integrity constraint. It is mainly useful in order to provide the relationship between the two tables. And let us see the last one. The last one is key integrity constraint. So here we know about entity. What is entity? Entity means a row in a table. If you take student table, let me have fields like this. Rule number, name and some mocks. Let the rule number is 1. So name is some Ramesh, mocks some 20. Let the rule number is 20. Name is Suresh, mocks 100. Let the rule number is 1, name is some Naresh, mock some 70. Here entity means a row, a row of a table is called as entity. Entity set means collection of rows. So an entity set is a collection of two rows, three rows, we can take any number of rows. Here an entity set is a collection of keys, but we have to select one key as the primary key. So what is entity set? It is a collection of keys out of which we have to select one key as the primary key. Here primary key means we have to satisfy two conditions. It cannot be null. So that value here let us assume that we have selected rule number as the primary key. So it cannot be null as well as it should be unique. It should be unique. Duplicate values cannot be allowed. Okay. So here if we consider this rule number. Here the rule number is 1, but already the first student rule number is 1. So this is not allowed here. This is not allowed here. So this is about key integrity constraint or in place of 2 we have written null. So this is not allowed here. Primary key cannot be null as well as primary key should be unique. So this is about various integrity constraints in a relational model. So this is about integrity constraints.